I'm Liz Scissors. In today's video, we are going to talk about scissors and I'm going to give you some insight on how to pick scissors and what scissors do what. All right, so let's get started. The correct way to scissor, and this is going to sound foreign to pet parents and even to some groomers, the correct scissoring fingers are your thumb and your fourth finger. Whether you're a righty or a lefty, it is your thumb and your fourth finger. The little tang at the bottom of the shear is meant for your pinky to rest on. It helps you give better control. It also gives you the ability to actually use the full range of the actual blade. If you have the wrong finger in, then it's gonna create a problem. Number one, your cutting is cut power is coming from your thumb, not from either any other finger, your thumb. That is what is moving, is your thumb. Your fourth finger is going to give you the ability to open the shear to its full capacity and still give you control of the shear. It also is going to make you have less grip because the fourth finger is the least strong finger in your hand. You are not going to power through things unnecessarily when you're using the right finger. An example of that is if you're scissoring around a foot and you go to hit a toenail, if you are scissoring correctly with your fingers in the right position, you're gonna hit that hard material of the nail. And quite frankly, it's probably gonna bounce out of your finger. You'll find that your, one of the, your finger holes will bounce away from your finger. So it gives you the ability to not be able to force through as easily, because if you force through anything, you're probably gonna regret your choices. Hair should not have to be forced through. You're probably not using the right shear for the job or there's something else going on and you gotta make sure you know what you're cutting. So there are many varieties of shears, but, and many manufacturers that make shears. So it's really important that you find the shear that fits your hand appropriately. And a quick, easy way to be able to do that is to find a shear. I'm gonna use this as an example. You're gonna take the shear, you're gonna put your fit, you're, you're gonna take the shear itself and you're gonna lay it on its side on your hand, like so and you're gonna find the balance point of that shear so that that shear is rested in that position. From that position, now that is the balance point of the length of that shear, you're going to then take your shear and lift it up and you're going to put your reach with your thumb, holding that shear in that position. Do you have to stretch to reach that hole with your thumb? Is it super close? That is what's gonna determine whether or not the shank length is appropriate to the size of your hand and it will help you from picking shears that don't fit and are not comfortable. Because quite frankly, most shears are fantastic and they do their job. The reason why we don't like them is because they don't fit our hand properly or they're a little bit heavier for us or too light for us. So you really wanna be very specific about choosing the shear that fits your hand. And that's just a quick way of being able to do it. So we have a variety of shears. You have curved shears, you have straight shears, and then you have your thinners, blenders, and chunkers. A curved shear is designed to help you create the curved shape quicker. That's all it's designed to do. It's no better or worse than a straight shear. It's just that it just allows you to be a little bit more time efficient. If you are not confident in your scissoring, scissoring skills, I strongly recommend that you use straight shears to create every single shape you can to practice and get the angles down before you move on to curve shears because curve shears are just to help you with your time. If you're not careful, some of these shears now are made very extreme in the curves and you won't be using the full potential of the shear because you're not familiar with the angle you should be using. So make sure you use your straights until you're really confident in your scissoring. Then you start using these time savers as opposed to using these before you're ready to use them. The next thing you need to know is that thinners and blenders and chunkers are not all the same. A thinning shear is obviously got a cutting edge, then it has your teeth that are separated out. And you have many varieties of how wide the teeth are set apart and how narrow they are, how many they are. And all of that determines how much hair it's taking out, which will determine what is the finish gonna look like. It also changes maybe the job that you're gonna use it for. A thinner is designed to go underneath the coat to debulk. 
because it doesn't take out very much. So it's very subtle in what it takes out or to achieve a very natural finish on the outside of the coat, but it's not cutting very much. So it's very tedious and time consuming, which is where a blender would come in. If you want to take your finish to a soft finish and a natural finish, but you want to go quicker than you go with a thinner, then you would use a blender, which is obviously going to have a longer blade on it. And so you're going to be able to cover more ground quicker and it's going to be a little bit more efficient than if you were using just a thinning shear. However, a blender is not designed to go into the coat. So if you were going to do any debulking, you wouldn't want to use these because it's going to be too aggressive and take out too much hair. So don't use these to go under the coat. Your chunkers, if you notice, are big gaps between the teeth and there's pros and cons. It leaves a very rough, natural finish. It's not a soft finish. It's more rough, which is great for the client that wants their dog to look scruffy or it looks natural. They don't want it to look too polished. So these are great for that. These are designed to use on the outside of the coat. You would never go up into the coat. You would never want to be taking out too much length because when you do that, because there's so much space in between these teeth, the metal is very fragile and it will cross and bend. And then you will be very upset that you have to wait to have these repaired. So these are for the outside of the coat to create a finish. So I hope that answers all of your questions today. I can be found on lizscissors.com and I will see you on the next one.